Today we're going to change the fuel filter on Duramax uh, and we're going to show you how to do it uh, and try to make it a little bit easier on it. Everybody hates to change the fuel filter on Duramax. It, it's a little bit harder really than it needs to be, but we're going to show you how we do it here, uh, maybe make it just a little bit easier on you. First off, uh, the filters that we use, and we carry these on the websites, uh, on the website, these are Parker Raycore uh, PFF50216. These are the metal canister filters. Um, this is what we install here at the shop, also what we sell on the website. Uh, you'll notice today in a lot of the uh, parts houses and the aftermarket houses, your AutoZone's Advanced Auto, they carry uh, the, uh, well, we won't say any brands, but they're a, a plastic canister filter. We have a lot better luck with this filter. Everybody seems to like this one a lot better. So let's get started with our install. Uh, we're putting on an 09 LMM today. Um, the 2001 to 2004 LB7 trucks, you can really remove the filter uh, and pull it out from the top. Uh, so a lot of this isn't necessary, but this works on those vehicles too. The rest of the vehicles are like LLY and down LLY to LML. It's really easier just going and pull the fender well out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull our fender, fender well out. Now with the fender well out of the truck, you can see how much easier it is to see the fuel filter and, and how much easier access that you've got. Uh, first thing in removing the fuel filter that we're going to want to do here, we're going to want to disconnect the water and fuel sensor. The water and fuel sensor will be tied into the main harness going along the, uh, the passenger side valve cover here. And to disconnect it, you simply push in the unlock tab in the center and that disconnects our water and fuel sensor from the main harness. Now, we're going to go ahead and remove the filter. To remove the filter, what we're going to use is just a simple strap wrench. Um, the easiest ones to use are the ones that you can actually load from the side because it is still going to be a tight fit here. So uh, the, our side loading uh, strap wrenches are usually going to be the easiest. All right, so what we're going to do, and it's, it's pretty tight here, we're going to do is just feed the strap through. And our side feed for our strap wrench, actually let it just get it lined up a little bit easier. Now, what you want to be careful of here, you want to be one. You want to be 100% sure when you when you put your strap in here, and you'll notice that there's several uh, different wires. The injector wires, the injector group wires, are close to this filter, and it is very tight. So you want to make sure that your strap is up against the filter, uh, and that you've got it on there good, and you don't have a wiring harness or anything kinked up in here. So now we're just going to loosen it. And usually once you once you get it broken loose, you can usually take it on out with your hand, which is what i found to be the easiest way to get them out. Now when you remove this, be aware that this fuel filter is going to be full of fuel. One thing that you want to look for when you bring the fuel filter out is you want to make sure that this rubber insert is here. If you look in your filter and the rubber insert has fell out of it, you'll have to go back to the fuel filter head and pull the rubber insert out. Make sure your O-ring came down with your old filter too so you don't double up on your O-rings or double up on these inserts. Uh, we get calls from people sometimes that say, I try to change my fuel filter, can't get it, you know, can't get it all to go all the way up. Usually they've doubled up on the O-ring somewhere. If you ever changed oil before, you know, it's, it's something I'm sure that you've encountered. So we're just going to empty the old fuel out of this and put our new filter on. All right, now from our old fuel filter, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing the water and fuel sensor and the, the, uh, the water drain from the, from the old filter. Um, one thing we suggest do, we sell these on the website. This is PPE's uh, water and in, in, uh, fuel sensor wrench. This is a part number 513-0800. We sell these on the website. This is a really, really nice tool to have. 
<coughs> especially if your water and fuel sensor is in pretty good shape and hadn't been chewed up, somebody hadn't grabbed a hold of it with a set of vice grips or whatnot. This one's actually been chewed up a little bit, but I think the PPE wrench will still get it off here. So just get that up on the water and fuel sensor. Just screw your water and fuel sensor out. That's actually been pretty good fuel there. Not a whole lot of rust in the bottom of there. That actually looks pretty good. Um, from your water and fuel sensor, you'll have an O-ring on it. You want to remove this because we do include a new O-ring with our uh, with our uh, filter. So I'll actually leave that right there in the wrench. In the in your fuel filter, your Raycor fuel filter, if you buy one from us, it's already going to come with new O-rings in it. You'll have a separate package here that will have O-rings in it. It'll have the water and fuel sensor O-ring and, and the sealing O-ring for the top of it. Now we're going to reinstall our water and fuel sensor. We include a new O-ring in the package with it. We're going to use just a little bit of axle grease on it just to fuzz, just to help it seal. Place this onto the water and fuel sensor. Okay, now we're going to reinstall our uh, water and fuel sensor. Uh, we got a new um, new O-ring. It came with our fuel filter here. What we're going to do is just make sure we've got her going on good and straight. Simply install it onto the new filter. Okay. Now with that, we're going to tighten it up with our PPE wrench. There's your water and fuel sensor reinstalled. And just snug it up. Don't cross thread it, overdo it, strip it out. Okay, there we are. So our, there's our water and fuel sensor installed on our filter. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install our, our top O-ring and get it ready to go back in the truck. Again, we're gonna use just, just a little bit of, of axle grease here. Petroleum jelly works fine too. And what I like to do with this is just go ahead and place it in the top of the filter and then work it right around with your fingers. And what the grease will do is the grease is actually going to hold that top O-ring in for you. When you go back, because that O-ring is a little bit undersized, as all O-rings are, and it wants to ride out on you there. And you can see it's already done it to me there. Throw it out on that end. so. And I'll, and I'll make sure that I've got some grease on there. And the grease will actually help to hold it in there. A little bit more here. It can be frustrating. This top o ring can be very daggone frustrating sometimes. And you'll see that the grease will just act like an adhesive there. And keep your o ring in. You just got to keep working with it to get it to stay. There it is, down nice and flush. Okay. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the filter. We've got our water and fuel sensor on. We've got our, uh, our new O-ring along the top of it. And you can see we've applied a liberal amount of grease on this. Again, it helps to hold that O-ring and you'll understand what I'm talking about when you go to grab that first O-ring and you understand it there a little bit more. So 
check your O-ring. Make sure your O-ring's there and everything's straight, because if you don't, you'll have a leak down here. This will cause you to have a hard start and you'll have a fuel leak. So it's very important that you get that top O-ring in correctly. All right, going back with it now. What we're do gonna do is just go right straight back to the filter head, of course, and I'm gonna try not to get in the way of the camera. Push up on the filter to start the, the center and then just begin tightening. Tighten our hand tight there. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to put our filter wrench back on. Just a couple turns with the filter wrench. Don't want to over tighten it. Just snug it up. Okay, now our fuel filter is installed. You can kind of look up at the top, make sure that the O-ring hasn't been squeezed out or rolled out anywhere. Everything looks good. Okay, now we want to hook back up our water and fuel sensor to the main harness. Just like so. All right, and now, forget, make sure it's tight. Okay, now for our bleeding procedure. Okay, now we're gonna go through our bleeding procedure and we're also gonna uh, install another product, product here, uh, the PPE um, Bleeder Screw Upgrade Kit, part number 5130810. The bleeder screw on the filter head, this, we're in the engine compartment now, uh, the, the bleeder screw is to the, to the right if you're facing the front of the fuel filter all the way down. It's plastic. It will break. This is, I'm sorry, this is it right here below my finger, right beside where my finger is right here. The stock one is plastic. It will break. If you're outside working on it on a cold day, you might as well just forget it. You're going to break it. So we're going to replace it with the PPE one. Uh, the PPE one is going to be a billet. Um, fuel, fuel screw. <laughs> the PP, the PPE unit is going to be a billet uh, fuel screw. Uh, so we're going to remove our bleeder screw now. 13 metric deep well is what we use. Uh, just right straight down on the filter head housing and just gently unscrew it out of there. This one was very loose. I'd say this probably had some hard start issues. Install our new PPE one. This bleeder screw already comes with the O ring installed on it. We're going to put this right in the filter housing. Okay. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna simply snug this down. Okay, so we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna prime the filter head first off, and we like to do that with the bleeder screw closed. All right, so with the bleeder screw closed, what we're gonna do is we're gonna 
push the hand primer four or five times. Okay, and then go in and open your bleeder screw and let the air out. And you'll hear the air escaping here. You're actually going to hear air escape. Okay, now that once the air has escaped, we tighten it back down. Tighten the bleeder screw back down. Pump it up again. Again, open the bleeder screw. All the air. One more time. Air again. Pump it up till it gets tight. Once it starts getting tight, that means you're getting fuel. You can see a little bit of fuel leak out that time. Not the air switching on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was our air compressor bleeding off pressure, not the air from the fuel filter. A little bit more air there. Okay, so you see we got a little bit of diesel fuel there. That means we're prime. So we're gonna tighten down our bleeder screw. Again, just snug it down. Don't need to get carried away with this. You'll strip the housing out. The housings are very, very expensive if you had to replace this. So just snug it down. Now Okay. Now when you bleed the truck correctly, um, once you go to start it, the truck should start right back up. Uh, if it takes a couple cranks for it to start, that's okay too. Uh, it'll pull its own fuel through, but uh, let's go ahead and start it. And once you start, you want to leave your fender well out and check for leaks with the truck running. You can see we don't have any leaks. Truck started fine. We'll reset the filter life, uh, the filter life minder inside the truck real quick. We'll go ahead and put our fender well back in and that's got our fuel filter installed done. So hopefully that answered a few of your questions. A lot of you, maybe you're scared to change the fuel filter on these because they are hard to get to. Hopefully this shed a little bit of light on it. If you've got any questions, just let us know.